Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at uh, cubic, exponential, and hyperbolic graphs. Um, this is the second installment of the nonlinear uh, relationships from the General 2 course. So today we're looking at three different types of graphs. Okay, so our cubic, exponential, and hyperbolas. Now we've already looked at first of all our linear graphs, which we remember our linear, which is our straight line. Um, that was in the form of y equals mx plus b, um, where it is linear because it's x to the power of 1. That's what makes it a linear graph. We then looked at, last lesson, um, looked at our parabolas or our quadratic functions, um, which was in the form of y equals x squared plus something. But again, it was the x to the power of 2 that made it a parabola. So today we're going to be looking at a cubic graph. Um, and I'm guessing you might sort of know what a cubic graph is going to be in terms of its uh, formation of the formula. It be y equals x cubed. Okay, that's what makes it a cubic. Our exponential, well, you might remember, you probably don't, um, that when we first introduced powers like squares and cubes and the power of 1, etc., they are what we call exponents. So an exponential graph is where the x is the actual exponent it is the power so it's y equals something to the power of x so it's the power of x and a hyperbola which you um, may have done back in year 10 hyperbola okay is where we have it as a fraction 1 over x now that's the same as having something like x the negative 1 which means that if the indice is a negative okay then it's going to be a hyperbola but the funk the form that you'll always have it in it will be in fraction form so if you've got an x as the denominator of a fraction that's what we refer to as a hyperbola now i know with linear and parabolas we've done a fair bit of work about graphing and reading off the graphs and doing lots of things with the different graphs um, with cubics exponentials and hyperbolas you pretty much just need to know what they look like and how to sketch one the good thing is that whether you're doing a linear parabola, cubic, exponential, or hyperbola, we always fall back to doing our table of values. You just might chuck a few extra in. For example, if you're not sure what a cubic or an exponential might look like, you might go from minus 3 um, down to positive 3. You don't have to. If you know what it looks like, that's okay. Um, but you can always fall back to doing your table of values um, and seeing you know, what it's going to look like. But we're going to go pretty much through each of the three graphs that we're looking at today. So we have our cubic graph. Now we've got here a cubic function has the equation of y equals ax cubed plus c. Okay, and that's simply to say that um, it's an x cubed. So the x is the cubic part, which makes it a cubic function. And the plus c is just what happens with the y-intercept, okay, just like you've had previously. Um, so first of all, construct the table of values, draw your number plane, plot your points, and join the points to make the curve. So it kind of looks like a parabola to start with. As you can see, it's going through like a parabola. But then when it gets to the origin there, the point of origin, you can see that it kind of goes upside down. Now, the reason for that, if I sort of do a table of values, I'm just going to use ones that they've got there. They've got negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If I put those values into the function y equals x cubed, okay, well, if I put brackets around negative 2 cubed, that's going to be negative 8. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 0 cubed is 0. 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8, and that's where you can see that it kind of reflects the left-hand side, the right-hand side, except the left-hand side is going to have negative y values, and that's where we're getting the negative 2, negative 8, etc., or thereabouts. Um, so that's pretty much what it looks like. It's like a parabola, but it cuts halfway through. Um, if you've got a bigger number in front of the x cubed, so let's say, so for example, we might have a 4x cubed, what's going to happen is it's going to be a little bit narrower as you can see there, a little bit steeper. Um, if you had plus 2 for example, it would look the same sort of thing but it would go through plus 2 this time and that's if it was something like y equals um, 2x cubed plus 2, it sort of pushes it up. Um, okay, next one we're looking at an exponential function. Now they've only used one quadrant here. I liked having both quadrants in on an exponential function because it's going to show you something else that happens. Um, now, again, the good thing is, like, it's to the power of x. So let's say, for example, we did y equals, um, let's say we do 
uh, to the power of x. Um, for example, if I sub in, um, one, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 3 to the power of 2 is 9. You can see how the numbers are coming about here, or thereabouts. Um, if I do 2 to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0, it could be 3 to the power of 0, 4 to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 will always equal 1. So one of the particular features of an exponential function it generally cuts the axis, the y-axis, the y-intercept at 1. But what happens if I put a negative number in? For example, 2 to the negative 1. Well, on my calculator, that comes up as a half, okay, which comes down sort of like that. If I do 2 to the negative 2, it comes up as 1 quarter. 2 to the power of negative 10, okay, that's going to be a fraction. And what happens, it never becomes a negative y value, it just gets closer and closer to the x axis, but doesn't actually cut it. We call that in mathematics an asymptote, um, but certainly in um, general mathematics, all you need to know that it looks like that. It kind of goes through one, gets really close to the x axis, but it never quite gets there. Okay, the last one that we're looking at is a hyperbolic function. This is a really strange one. This is where you have it in the form of, let's say, for example, 1 divided by x. So if I'm doing my table of values, um, I'm going to use negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4, just because they've used those values there, although they might be the ones they've used. Um, if I look at something such as 1 over negative 4, okay, that means it's negative a quarter. So negative 4, negative a quarter, okay, it comes here, which looks to be about what they've used. That's negative 1, so it's halfway, which is negative a quarter. So that's negative 1 quarter. If I put the negative 2 underneath, I get negative a half. If I put uh, 1 over 2, I get a half. 1 over 4, I get a quarter. But you might notice I've left 1 there, okay, because what happens when you put 0 as a de de denominator? Now, it might be a good idea to chuck in your calculator now. Do 1 divided by 0, 1 over 0, and it comes up as a math error. That's because dividing by 0 is what we refer to as undefined. Okay, it can't happen. How can you divide something by 0 if nothing goes into it? It's too difficult. What you'll notice that because I can't plot that, have a look at where x equals 0. See how there is no point on that line where x equals 0? That's because it's not possible. You can't actually put a point on that line. So when I'm doing my coordinates, you can see here I've got negative a quarter, I've got well, negative 2, I've got negative a half. Okay, what's going to happen between these two amounts here, you might chuck in negative 1, even negative a half, negative a quarter, you'll see that it starts to turn and it gets really close to that x-axis but it never quite gets there. Likewise, if I look on the right-hand side, I've got 2. Well, in this case, it's two, it goes 2, 1. But, you know, on my one, it would go 2 and a half, 4 and a quarter. You know, it might go 5 and 1 fifth, et cetera, et cetera. But if I look at here, we get 1 over 1, and then you get 1 over a half, which is 2, 1 over um, a third, etc. It's going to go steeper and steeper. So you could do a table of values, but you might want to have more values in between 0 and 2 to sort of help out. But it's quite important just to learn, in my perspective, what a hyperbolic function looks like. It looks like sort of, yeah, these two lines where they get close to the y and the x axis, but they never quite reach. The way I remember it is I know that I can't divide by 0. That doesn't work. Therefore, it's that graph where it can't actually hit 0. All the other graphs certainly do hit zero. Now, um, I'm just going to add in, just put another layer on here. Um, just when I'm looking through it, just going to revise before I go on to a HSC question. So a straight line graph, okay, is just simply that it's a straight line. Okay, so that's y equals, let's say for example, x plus 3. That's what it could be. If I looked at a parabola, that's where I have my happy face graph. Okay, that could be the graph of y equals x squared. If I then look at my cubic graph, it kind of looks like a parabola to start with, but then it goes downwards. Okay, that could be the graph of y equals x cubed. My exponential graph is where it cuts through 1, because x to the power of 0 is 1, and it gets really close to the x-axis but never quite reaches. And the last one we did, which was our hyperbola, is one where it can't hit the x-axis, so the y-axis at all, all the x-axis, 
but it gets really close because I can't divide by zero. There's nothing actually there. But you can see for x equals zero, that's x equals zero, x equals zero, x equals zero, x equals zero. There's always a y coordinate for these ones here. Okay, there's a y intercept at all times, but there is no y intercept for this particular graph. It doesn't quite work. Okay, let's have a look at a question, see if you can do this now. As I said to you a lot of time, you might have to draw one, but often it's like a question like this. It's a multiple choice question which says, which graph best represents y equals 3 to the power of x? Now, if I was doing this question, I'd look at that and go, it's to the power of x, therefore, this is an exponential equation. Therefore, an exponential equation usually cuts the x, so the y-axis at 1, which would be that one there, and it would continue on very close to the x-axis, but never quite reaches. Therefore, I would say straight away that it's d. Now, if you weren't sure, just chuck some values in. For example, chuck in 3 to the power of 0 and see where it's going to, where it's going to be. Okay, I'd chuck in maybe um, you put in 3 to the power of 1, which equals 3. 3 to the power of 2, which equals 9. You might notice that these points are going up. If I did on this one, these points are going down. It couldn't be that one. Okay, It can't be this one because we know it has to cut somewhere up there. This one's going down straight away. Those two can't be happening. Um, if you're not sure, guys, again, just use a table of values. I know there's no values there, but make some up. That's going to help you. Okay, 3 to the power of 0 is 1, 3, 3 squared is 9, 27. You can kind of work to see what your graph is going to look like and see which of the four graphs it's going to be. That's your most common question. Okay, your most common question will be that one right there. Um, occasionally, you might be asked to draw an exponential, a cubic, or, um, or a uh, hyperbola, but to be honest, guys, very, very rarely. So that's a question that you need to be worried about. Go through, have a look at your past papers or your past questions. Have a crack at those and then see how you get on. Have a great day, guys.